Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. Today we're doing something very different. I'm going to share with you how I practice drawing faces to yes, get better at it, but also to strengthen or as a lot of people like to say, find my own personal style. And there may or may not be a really cool giveaway at the end as well, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But first, let's start with a super quick refresher on the basics of drawing human faces. There are a lot of different ways to break down the face or different methods to draw a human face. And even I personally, depending on the context, will use different methods or different styles. When I practice drawing faces, I go for a breakdown that is, I would say, semi-realistic. And so this is the method I have in the back of my mind as a skeleton or the basic structure behind the face I'm about to draw. So the first shape I usually draw is just a very quick, super rough circle for the cranium. And throughout the entire sketching process, I try to be as fast as I can. Here it's really more about quantity over quality, which I know usually is the opposite, but I think for sketching, if you can get a bunch of sketches out, that's great. So I really start with a super quick wonky circle and then without thinking too much about it, I divide that circle with a vertical line. And that vertical line is probably the most important line in the entire sketch because it gives a direction to the head right out of the gate. Then I go ahead and add the jaw, which is an element I love to play with to give personality to my characters. And here usually I just take all the rules of proportions and I just throw them out the window and I draw whatever shape jaw I feel compelled to draw for that specific character. Now usually at this point I get way too excited and I start drawing all the features all at once, but the proper way to do it would be to add a horizontal line to anchor the eyes. Now I like to add that horizontal line roughly where the jaw meets the circle. And then from there you can go ahead and add more guides, one for the nose and one for the mouth. The proper way to add those guides would be to divide the section between the eyes and the bottom of the chin roughly in two, and that's where you would place the bottom of the nose and then place the mouth in the top third of that new bottom section. Personally, I tend to put the bottom of the nose roughly at the bottom of my cranium circle, so a little bit higher than it would be. And then the mouth, I just kind of squeeze it in somewhere. Again, not really following the card proportion. And that is what I mean when I say I want to strengthen my personal style. The more sketches I draw, the more I tend to place the features in a position that is not exactly proportional, but works somehow and helps give my character a signature look. And from there, I usually map out two ovals for the ears with the top aligning with the eyes and then the bottom aligning with the mouth. And finally, I add the eyebrows, which again, I just take all the rules, throw them out the window. I usually just draw them wherever I want. And part of my style is to draw them way, way higher than they should be. So again, these are the basic guides I keep in mind when I want to practice drawing faces. But if you were to just draw these same guides over and over and over again, you would end up with a bunch of sketches that just look like this weird, you know, Safia, the AI robot. I mean, that's really not what we want. So enter is the practice routine. Now to get better at drawing faces, we actually need to get out of our comfort zone and draw the things that we struggle with. I know that's not really the most fun, but that's what we have to do. And for me, what that is, at least these days, is more masculine faces as well as weird angles. Usually if you're struggling to draw something, it's because you're struggling also to picture it really well in your mind. To get good at drawing something, we need to, yes, practice drawing it, but we need to practice drawing it with the proper version of it, so the proper representation, cue references. One thing I've discovered though is if I take my iPad or take a pencil and paper, find my reference and start drawing, it is not going to work well. It took me years to figure that out, but I need to start with a rough sketch of whatever is in my mind first. So I'm not trying to draw any kind of specific character. I'm not going in with an intention, I'm just grabbing the pencil and drawing whatever is in my brain. When we go throughout the day, we see a lot of different people that have different facial features, that have different expressions on their face, and our brain just kind of stores all of that. And I personally feel like if I'm about to draw a bunch of faces looking at reference, I first need to empty my brain from the things I saw throughout the day. And that means taking whatever I'm about to sketch on and let my brain sketch whatever I want to sketch. So it comes out within my comfort zone, but still is usually a sketch I'm quite happy with. 
once I'm done emptying my brain, this is when the real work starts. So I go ahead and I try to find a reference that is somewhat within my comfort zone first. So that might mean more of a feminine face or a masculine face, but I see in three quarter, something pretty simple. And then my goal is not to be realistic and not to recreate that reference, but use it as the base for what I'm drawing. So the first sketch is really completely top of mind, whatever comes in, is what I'm gonna draw. This sketch is based on the reference, although quite loosely. So depending on the time I have in my practice session, I usually draw either one or two of those, and then, only then, do I move on to drawing challenging faces. That means going on wherever you take your face references and picking the one you want to draw the least. If you see one and you're like, huh, that's the one you need to draw. And for that one, I really encourage you to have some moral support like a cup of tea or a dog. Boop. <laughs> and here the goal is still not to be realistic or to copy the reference exactly. My main goal at this stage is figuring out how I can have fun drawing that reference picture that I just really was trying to avoid initially. And so I'm just focusing on remembering the proportions we talked about in the first section, or well, not even the proportions, but just the basic breakdown we talked about in the first section. And then how can I make it a character that actually is speaking to me in some shape or form? I tried to do this exercise at least two or three times, sometimes more if I have a lot of time in my sketching session. And that's exactly what I said. If you can sketch quickly, that is amazing because you're going to be able to go through more reference pictures which is really what you want. Now, once I feel like I'm getting tired or if I need to move on to a different part of my day, I stop drawing from reference pictures and I do one more face from just top of mind to give my brain a little bit of a break and to close the practice session on a positive note. And interestingly enough, even though that sketch is also done from top of mind, I find it is usually much more out of my comfort zone than what I did for the first sketch. And that is absolutely crazy. It means even within just one practice session, drawing faces you're not as comfortable with is going to yield results. So that is my personal routine. You might have something completely different. Now let's state that and see how that would actually translate to the basic shapes and forms we were talking about at the start of the video. Here's an example of what a sketch from top of mind might look like for me. It is within my comfort zone, it's more of a feminine face, it's seen from three quarter, and it's using the basic shapes we talked about in the first section of this video. So a circle for the head, a vertical line to divide the head, and then the jaw, the facial features, the ears, and all of those. And because it is from top of mind, it tends to be more my personal style than when I'm using a reference. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so important to do both within a practice session. So for example, this sketch right here was based on a reference picture. And the sketches I'm showing you right now are from a real practice session I did a while ago. I didn't want to redo them just for this video because that's kind of cheating. I wanted to show you what it really looks like when I'm really practicing. And I couldn't find the reference picture I used for that specific one, but I promise I'll have the references in the next examples. This one is still a little bit in my comfort zone. It is a more masculine face, but not like super masculine either, but it's still three quarter of you. But already because I was using a reference, it feels a little bit less like my style. Now this one is an interesting example because it is seen straight on, but to me that's really challenging because it is an older character, which I don't draw a whole lot of older characters, so that was really out of my comfort zone. And you might be able to tell because I'm jumping from one facial feature to the other really quickly, I'm kind of all over the place, and that is a sign I am uncomfortable literally being out of my comfort zone. So if you've ever feel the same when you're practicing sketching faces or whatever else for that matter, if you feel unsure, if you feel like you're all over the place, that is a really, really good sign you're actually practicing something you struggle with. So just keep at it, keep doing the same kind of reference image practices and you're gonna get better over time and you're gonna get more comfortable with this. Now this is another example of working with a reference picture I was struggling with. I really, really struggle with profile view and this is a more masculine face and profile view. So for me, that is really tricky. You can see I'm changing the proportions a lot. I'm using distort tools until I figure out what seemed to work for that character. And if you look above the screen, you're gonna notice the purple lines from the grandma we just drew in the previous example. I like to sketch all the sketches of one practice session on one canvas, but with different colors. 
I think it's a really helpful thing as well to have that kind of snapshot of one practice session all in one place. You can see the progress within that same practice session, but also between the different practice sessions you're going to do over time, which is really super rewarding. And here's the one I did to close the session. So again, something from top of mind, and you can see already it is way, well, way out of my comfort zone. It's still a feminine face, but it's seen from above, which is something I really don't tend to draw. But it's back into being a little bit more my style than the pictures with reference. And if you start practicing like this, you're going to notice that the way you draw is going to change from day to day. One day it might be super easy, you might breeze through the whole practice session and be really happy with your sketches, and then the next day you might be just really frustrated, and no matter what you do, you cannot make it work. When I have one of those days, I just leave it for that day. Not that a challenge is not a good thing, but being really frustrated and angry is really not serving anyone. As a matter of fact, it might keep you from practicing again in the future. So when that happens, what I personally do is just I stop for the day and I try again the next day, and usually it goes way better. Before you leave, let's talk really quickly about the giveaway. Right now, the week I'm posting this video, it is Thanksgiving week, and I don't know about you, but I feel like this year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all those things got really out of hand, but I still wanna honor the idea of Thanksgiving. And one thing I'm really, truly grateful for is all of you here on the channel. And so I thought instead of just sending you 20 emails about one big sale that I'm doing this week and try to pressure you into buying something, I'm going to host a giveaway within this video, and I'm also going to add a few promo codes within the video description when the giveaway is over, so you could use them whenever even if the whole Black Friday thing is done. All the details on how you can enter, the different prizes and the dates are going to be within the video description, but essentially I'm going to have three winners. Two winners are going to win a brush pack of their choice, so they can just go on my store and pick whatever they want. And then there's going to be one grand prize in which the winner is going to win access to my brand new illustration course as well as whichever brush set they want. And I want to make that giveaway as fair as possible. So even if you already purchased either my brushes or my course, you can still enter. And if you win, I will just refund whatever past purchase you had for that item that you won. Hopefully that makes sense. But again, though, all the details on how you can enter, as well as the legal things and the dates and all that are going to be within the video description, along with some promo codes you can use to get discounts if you're watching this video and the giveaway is already over. I really hope these practicing tricks were helpful to you. In the meantime, though, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch of character drawing tips for you, like drawing noses, hands, stuff like that. But before you leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday, and then click on the link right here, and I'll meet you there.